are pit collage and telegami. And I'll show you a couple other. Uh, telegami is like a avatar creator that you can use your voice, or there's like 16 different voices. Um, I'll give you an example. Next week we're going to be doing uh, telegamis with our kids learning how to use Doodle Buddy. They're studying about snowmen in kindergarten. So they created something, and then if you smash them together, you know, you use one app to create something, but when you can use multiple apps to create one product, it's called an app smash. And it's powerful because you got start getting kids to think how they can use different apps to create one product. And so what I've seen a lot of at our school, especially this year, our teachers are starting and we've been steering them to not just using one app. Don't just tell your students, I'm going to have you make a pit collage and here's the final product. Give them your expectations and say, good luck. Because think how many times in your schooling career or in the real world, you have to problem solve. So I'd love to encourage that problem solving and app smashing is going to, uh, going to allow you to do that. So I'm going to show you pit collage. And if you have it downloaded, I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you some work time here and you're going to actually create a, create a collage and then I'm, we're going to put a timer up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to use Telegami. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I'm going to go back to my Google document here. And if you would like to, at the end of the day, I do have paper copies. I started creating app task challenges and I guess who doesn't like competition and what, what so I tried to put a competition competitive type slant to this for our teachers. I'm going to start doing these for our students as well to get them, uh, like the stick around app is becoming very popular with our Spanish teachers. So to get them uh, to be able to use the app uh, efficiently and fluently, we're going to start creating some challenges. But I thought, you know, I meet with our middle school teachers every Thursday uh, during their IDT teams and we meet as a group and I kept, I felt like I was just putting another thing on their plate, putting another thing on their plate, putting another thing on their plate and they weren't using it, they weren't integrating it in their classroom because I'd ask them, hey, how are you using pit clutch? How are you using this? And they just kind of sit at me and go, I don't really know how to use that. So I thought, okay, what can I do to make it more engaging for my teachers? So I started creating app task challenges or app smash challenges, smashing two apps together. This would take us uh, we're going to be doing it as a group, but if you were to do it by yourself and go through step by step, oh, it takes you 10 minutes to do something like this. Now, I always try to give my teachers some ideas over here. Feel free to take these here. I do. I did upload them to the uh, UNL Tech Edge. Uh, there's a Google folder, uh, and I will keep adding to that. My goal is to do, I've been doing it for about six weeks. I got five, six up here, so I want to have about, my goal is to have 20 by the end of the year so teachers can take them home and play over the summer. And it just pretty much shows you, it gives you a challenge. So today we're going to be creating a pit collage, which is very easy. And there are a myriad of uses for pit collage in the classroom. And then we're going to smash it together with Telegami. Um, there are tons of different apps. If you can save it to the camera roll, you can smash it into another app. So we're going to start with the easiest one today. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and go back to our very first one. And I think I shared this link to this document. If not, I'll add it into the folder. This is uh, the very first one, is what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to create a pit collage that would tie into your curriculum. Now, if you're not teaching right now, let's just think of something and use the pictures that you have on your camera, okay? We'll go with that. So you've got to be creative here. Creativity costs you nothing, so it's okay just to throw something together here. But I try to give our teachers some ideas how you could use this. I've seen pit collage used in the math classroom. I've seen it used in preschool. Super easy app that's so easy to use. Okay, and like I said before, we used it to replicate or duplicate um, Instagram in our sixth grade classrooms. Our sixth graders use this, and it looks totally like a uh, uh, Instagram uh, post or a, or a wall, if you will. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open pit collage. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go into pit collage, and. If you are, how many of your students teaching right now? Do you have an iPad? Do you, are you, do you have iPads in your school? Okay, become very fluent with that because I just see a lot of schools starting to use the iPads and I think you'll be that much more marketable if you can go into an interview and say, hey, check this out. Uh, I'm gonna do this with my students. Um, so if you can, get your hands on an iPad. Here's just some examples. In kindergarten, we did these. This is the example I had with the kids. They were learning how to make applesauce. And so we went in and we made a pit collage. And they were studying about apples. Then we just had our students in a half an hour, they learned, we would put all the words up on the board. Remember that you have to use Comic Sans. And I didn't 
do that there with primary kids. I learned that right away. My kindergarten teachers used Comic Sans because it has this certain A that they have there. So you'll have to use the Comic Sans font. And we were learning, uh, we were going to make applesauce, so we just said, what are the ingredients? And we're going to make a simple pit clash. Very easy. Kids, your primary kids really, really like this app. It gives them a chance to express themselves. Here is something we did in second grade. It was just the life cycle of a frog. And so the kids could go in and put it however they wanted to. They could put it in cyclical order, however they wanted to do that. We created a simple uh, collage like this. And the nice thing about pit collage, you can search photos from the web. So I'm going to go ahead and get back out of here. I'm going to show you the basics of pit collage, then I'm going to let you start playing. Okay, so if you tap on the screen right here, you have a blank canvas. Okay, the, boring, the, the, the brown background is obviously pretty boring. So we can change that by going down the bottom left. You see in the bottom left corner down there, you have the change layout or change background. And we always tell, always tell my kids, you can change your background right now, layout later when you put pictures in, because then it puts them all into order for you. So we're just going to change the background. And you can see here, when I get the change background feature here, I can search. There's that magnifying glass. So somebody give me an idea for a background here. Lego. Perfect. Lego. So now, if you see, I clicked on the magnifying glass. It popped up. What do I want to put in there? We're going to put Lego in there. And let's just see and cross our fingers if we get something that's perfect. There's the Lego. I change my background. Let's go ahead and close it. See if the resolution, ch resolution changes for us. There we go. Okay, so there's my background. Okay, we're doing a pic collage on Legos or building or creating or something. Okay, so I've changed my background. You have a variety of others there. If you look, you scroll through, you have a ton of different possibilities there. Okay, so we're going to leave the Lego background. Now, how do I add things to a pit collage? It's very easy. You just tap anywhere on the screen, or if you go to the plus sign right there, you can see that you can add from your camera. You can take a picture right there. I always tell our kids, let's take our pictures beforehand. We did a project about our school, so little kindergartners, we went and took pictures of the nurse's office, principal's office. Uh, the front office, the PE, were lunches. We did that and we created pit collages. And then they would just have on our camera roll, we'd use the add photos. Photos from the web, add text, and then add stickers. Kids will go nuts with the stickers, so I just tell them no stickers. Hands off, primary kids, because they will. They'll load that thing up and that doodle buddy, they'll use the stamps and they'll go crazy. And before you know it, you'll have a whole background full of stamps. Okay? So we're going to give me a tile that we could put on our pick collage here. Not everybody at once. There you go. Democracy and Legos. Love it. <laughs> Democracy. This is going to be interesting. Now, if you notice, now kids will get ahead of you here. This is where I told you this morning, show me you're ready. That's our prompt. That's, our, that's my verbal prompt to tell show me you're ready. And they know that right away their hands go in their lap. Now, I did have to pull an iPad from a first grader and a second grader the other day because it's like that chocolate bar. And they want to try to think they know how to use it. And they'll try to get ahead of you. So I just, we take their iPad and take it away from them. So how do I change the, the font? You can see right there. You see that I have four different slides right there of fonts. So I have a good selection right there. If I uh, click on the quill pen up there, I can change the color of that font. And if I click on that, we'll just go ahead and show you. I can now change the color of that. And I don't like the white background. See how it's got the white background to it? I'm going to take that off. See the three little buttons over there next to the can of paint? If I tap those, then I can take my text outline off. Okay, but I want to put a white background behind that, so I'm going to click on the bucket there, tap here, and then I click done. Now I can just use your two fingers and you can move that wherever you want to. Okay, so there's my title. Now I'm going to add some photos and Let's just see what we have for photos on our camera roll. Uh, I will take and add a couple here. Let's just add four photos from my camera roll. Now notice it just threw them out loose on there. Now I can move these around just like this. And if you hold it, it'll bring it to the front. But I kind of have that ADHD, so I like to make everything straight. If you would take your iPad or your phone right now, shake it. It'll, oh, there I heard the clicks. I'm not going to pick mine up because I'm hooked up. It will, actually I'll try it here and if I unhook, it will make everything straight for you. Or you can do this. Now we've added our pictures, so we're going to go to change that layout. 
and pick cloud who's going to recognize that it says, hey, you have four pictures. So I could choose one of those collages. You can see I have three little buttons on the very bottom. I could add more, but I think I'll just go with the standard four right there, and it puts them, and I want to make those pictures a little bit, perfect. There's my pick collage. Okay, so what do we do when we're done with them? High school kids will tweet them to their instructors using their classroom hashtag AHS file, Aurora Spanish. Um, we have two others, I can't think, uh, um, AHS 109, and then we have one more teacher that has a hashtag, and I can't think of it right now. So you can save that then to your camera. So here's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you seven minutes. Seven minutes too much? Do you think you can do one in five minutes? I'm going to give you five minutes. You have to create a pic clutch. If you don't have any pictures on your camera, well, you better start taking pictures or selfies of yourself or going around and taking pictures of maybe things in this classroom. Okay, so you got to think here. I want you to make a pic collage, and then when you're done, you need to save it to your camera. So the push button, I call it the push button with the kids. You click on the push button right here, and we want to save this to our library because we're going to smash it into Telegami in a second. Okay, so I'm going to start my timer. You have five minutes to create a pic collage with a background. Let's get at least three images on that. Okay, and then save it to your camera, and then we'll go to the next stage. So I'm going to click on my clock here. Here's one thing I'll show you guys. If I take that picture and I don't want it, if I just throw it up to my trash, if I just flick it up there, and that'll happen, especially with your primary kids, and they'll be like, oh, I didn't mean to throw that away, just tap the trash can, and it'll come back. And if I hold that image over the top of that box, it'll dump it into there for me. One thing I didn't show you, this picture right here, that would be a good photo to enhance in the lower left-hand corner. If I double tap that photo, you have editing tools. They've just added this. It's like the app keeps getting better and it's free. There's the, I can clip the photo. When my daughter was doing her Instagram project, she was, you, you get a pair of scissors and she wanted the refresh button. So she went in there and she cut it out perfectly because there was some stuff she didn't want behind it. And I mean, it's the kids, you'll see, kids can get really creative with this. If I click on the edit photo right there, you'll see there are some effects that pull up right here. And I could even go into, let's see, there you can see an effect and I apply it. I can also do the focus feature that you have right here if I wanted to zoom into that iPad and blur everything else. So you can really get, and I, I use this with some of our older kids, not the primary kids. And you can even draw on the top of that if you want to. So you can see my effect is there now. And did everybody get it to their camera roll? So I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my library. Now we had two people ask this question and there's nothing more frustrating. You have the card of iPads you get to this point and you can't access the photos on your camera roll. Here's how you fix that, okay? Five finger pinch move, it's super secret ninja move, show your kids, just five finger pinch. Goes back to your desktop, you also have the finger swipe down, it's like iPad aerobics, right? So we're gonna go over to my settings, and if you ever get that where it says it can't access photos on your camera roll, look at your privacy setting right there, click on your photos, and then these are all the apps that I've given access to my photos. Now, it's just good to probably go through, I probably need to go through and check some of those apps that I've given permission to access my photos. And even use your, uh, your location services. Go in there and check that. Even on your phone, you're given apps the ability to track you, wherever you, that's kind of creepy. So just, just turn on your maps and stuff or turn it off when you don't need it. Okay, so now it's on your camera roll. Let's go open the Telegami app. So go find Telegami, and I'll show you another one after we're done with Telegami, after we're done with this app smash. The, uh, if you want to join the back channel, which I'm looking right here, uh, we have students online, hi online students. They are, uh, the URL for that is http colon backslash backslash connect.unl.edu forward slash Tech Edge 10, if you want to join the back channel. Back channel is awesome in your classroom. Um, I'm trying to draw a blank right now. The back channel, help me out here. What's the one? Uh, we use it all the time in our mystery Skypes. Uh, today's Meet, todaysmeet.com. Have that going. If you're, if you're showing a short informational video in class, 10, 12 minutes, go make a Today's Meet. Uh, you can create a chat room for your kids. Let them have the device on. You can ask them questions during the video. Didn't it drive you nuts when your teacher you're watching a video and they come up and they pause it 
and then they talk about it and you, it like disengaged you. So use the back channel, our uh, uh, advanced history teacher uses the back channel a lot and you'll see it used at conferences, but if you go to todaysmeet.com, you can have the back channel vanish in two hours or you can have it up there for a week. We use it in Mystery Skype. Todaysmeet.com is a great website to do a free back channel and you can archive and you can save them too. So if a kid does something bad, you have a printout of it. Okay, so let's do telegami. We're gonna go ahead and create. I'm gonna go ahead and reset mine. You're probably gonna get a prompt that says uh, something like, we'll go through the tutorial. I think there's an X in the upper right hand corner. Just skip that. We wanna to get to this screen where you see this blonde chick right here. And telegami's fun. Kids love telegami. Even on some of our high school, here's how uh, an example, our high school teacher, social studies teacher, they analyzed World War I posters. And she would have a worksheet. And she's trying to get away from the worksheets. And she's trying to use this device. This isn't a consumption device. This is a creation device. You just have to think a little bit. Remember, creativity costs you nothing. Okay? So what she did was she had the kids pass out. She had little posters, World War I propaganda posters. And she had the kids come up and we taught them how to crop photos. Do you know how to use the cropping tools on your camera app? Okay, if not, there's an app challenge up here. It might seem, well, everybody knows how to do it. I had several teachers go, oh, I didn't know how you could change the uh, exposure by tapping the picture and that little X or that little uh, box comes up there or what the HDR was if you had the iPad 3 or above. Um, so we cropped the photos down. They put them in the background right there because we're gonna put your pic collage in the background in a second and then you're gonna talk about it or you're gonna use one of the 16 voices, okay? It's more fun to use the voices, so we'll let you use one of the voices too. So I'm just gonna show you how to use it really quick, and then you're going to smash together these two apps. Okay, so the reset button obviously resets. Now character, uh, this is where we want to change our gender. Obviously I'm not a girl, so I'm a boy. Oh, and it remembers me from last time, perfect. So it does tend to start remembering you as you, rem as you make them. So, perfect. I don't have to do it. But here's what a first grader taught me and put him on the launch pad. He comes up to me and says, Mr. Badura, did you know you just have to tap the suit or the pants to change the colors? I was always doing this. I was always going over to the character. I was always tapping on the top. He said, all you have to do, tap his head to go change his hair. I'm like, ah. And that kid went back. I taught Mr. Badura something today. That first grader, okay, launched him. He loved it. Okay, so go ahead and make yourself by using those different tools. Go put some clothes on them, dress them up, however you want to. You're making yourself. So you have to telegami yourself right now. I want to move my gami. If you take your finger above him, now I can go to the side of him, up and down. Watch what happens. Okay, I can go up above, left to right. I can move my gami. Now I want to get rid of those tools on the right, so I just need to click the back button, upper left hand corner, and I want to move my gami now. If, if you get, you're, you're going to get frustrated the first time you use it because you're like, how did he move the gami? It's because you have to have that reset button. Then you can move your gami around. Our, uh, one of our middle school science teachers studying weather, Fox News, they have the green screen on the floor. You ever watch that? Or they're doing the weather down here and they're walking over to Boston right here and they're talking about the weather. So you could do this. That's what he did with his kids. They were talking about weather. He moved his gami like this. And then he had a weather map in the background and they had to do a weather forecast. Our Spanish teachers use this all the time. They will have the kids create a forecast for the week and then they have to gami themselves and then they have to forecast the weather in Spanish easy way to use it, okay? Beats a worksheet, I don't know, unless you guys like doing worksheets. If you give them a the worksheet and the kids know the answers, is it really worthwhile? I don't know, I personally don't think so. Okay, so now, did anybody figure out how to get the background? So how did we get the background? We just tap our background, and I, you can see that they have some samples here, and I found out a hard way in first grade. Anybody see why this one would be inappropriate for first grade? Yeah, nice glasses of wine back there, so I'm like, ah, oh, let's just start using gummies that we're going to create our own backgrounds. Okay, but they do have some, and they haven't really had a big update, so I'm looking forward if they would have an update. Our math teachers will use the doodle feature, just gives you a blank background. 
they'll write out an equation the GAMI talks, talks their way through it. Okay? Kind of like a show me type or an educations or an ask three feature. So we're just going to use from our library. And there is my, I like him over here. We'll move him over here. And you can make him a little smaller if you'd like. Okay. Now, it's entirely up to you, but I'll show you a little glitch that I noticed in the app. When you, when you go to type, if you click on the type feature right now, let your kids have one minute of free time right now because they will do this. Hello, my name is Billy. Hello, my name is Jimmy. They'll do this. And you're trying to talk over them. My name is David. And you're going, trying to talk, and so just say, okay, go listen to the voices. You got one minute. And so my favorite is, is Liam. There you go. So I like to talk as Liam. Okay. Uh, the girls tend to go to Mary or Susan. My name is Susan. Okay. So I'm going to be Liam. And then you have 400 characters. So that's quite a bit of information to put in there. And I just have our kids talk about or teach what is in the background that you just put in there. So now you have to go in and type that text in. So let's take a minute or so. Now tell me a story about what's in your background. Okay, so let's start doing that right now. I'll throw a story into here. Oh, yeah, the, the emotions too. We could do the, uh, what's her name? Hannah Montana. We'll do the, uh, come on, Miley. So, let's see what you look like. Miley Cyrus? Perfect. There you go. So, go ahead and type something in there. A lot of times in primary grades, too, we'll have the kids paper write first, because we do some blogging in first grade and, kin and kindergarten, we will be using kid blog, but have your kids paper write it first, then they have the copy, they can sit right next to it. So this would be something that take me probably two sessions to go through in a primary classroom. We meet for about a half an hour every week, and we rotate in a uh, first grade and second grade basis, but... And I don't like that face, so we'll go with a happy one. That's just not appropriate, is it? Uh, one thing that I will tell you, you will get this sometimes. If you go to play the voice and it says, whoops, there was an error, try to go back in by tapping on this, pick a different voice, play it. If that doesn't work, here's what I do. I just go in, click done, I go back, and I go right back up to the, whoops, I go to this, and then I just have the students record it. You can record 30 seconds. That's what our Spanish teachers use. They never have them type it in. They actually have them put it on there. So we have an example that a teacher created. So we'll go ahead and share this. And then we'll go over. I'm going to ask for a volunteer to do. Oh, you have the new iPad. I don't have the. You got the fancy new one. I don't have the proper. Uh, Adapter. Uh, she's got. Is that the iPad 4? Oh, fancy you! Wow, I'm jealous. And they changed the pin on that one too. Man, Apple's make. I'd love to know how much money they make just on adapters. Yes, crazy. Okay, so that is pick collage. You just created your first smash. There's tons. Use the hashtag app smashing. There are a plethora of them out there on Twitter. So. You don't have to sit here and think, what can I do? Go to Twitter, app smashing. Go to Pinterest, put in app smashing. It's just becoming very popular in about the last four to five to six months. So that's one that I started my teachers off with. I want to pick on somebody. I need a volunteer right here. Yep, yep, if you click on the little arrow right there. There you go, and then you can play. Now what I'll have kids do, share it, save it to your camera roll. We have iMovie. Do you guys have iMovie on your iPads at all? One of my, probably my favorite app to use because then our English teacher came in and said, Craig, I want to do gummies, but how do I get two telegummies to talk to each other? And I said, let's think about it. How would I do that? How would I get a gummy to talk to another one on the other side? I would have to take a screenshot of that gummy standing there. You know how to take the screenshot on your iPad, right? So you go to here, take your screenshot. It goes to your camera roll, we dumped it in, created that character, created that character, put it on the other side. 
he was redoing a scene from The Outsiders. Then the kids have to smack, it's a little bit of work, and you will have kids that'll do this. Mr. Badura, can't I just have a worksheet? <laughs> no, we're not doing worksheets anymore. They will, our science teacher did a, a, something like this for his final, and he had probably half the kids said, can I just take a paper test? Nope, here's your rubric, here's what I need. And so we're struggling with getting to that, create, some kids are just, we're creating canned learners like this. Lineal learning is not, like I said, make it messy. Um, I need a volunteer. Who wants to volunteer? Good. Okay, go take uh, three random pictures in this room. Three random yep, pictures. Yep, three random pictures. And here's what we're going to do. Open pop -up light while she's taking pictures. We're going to do pop -up light. We're going to just do a little quick smash here using pop -up light. And I'm going to go back and forth here. pop -up light is super easy to use in the classroom. History, English, math. Whatever you have, subject level doesn't matter, but I have five minutes, so we're going to show you how to do a quick poplet right here. And maybe you're studying inferences. So we'll use poplet light, and we're going to do an inference. So we're studying inferences in fourth grade today. So instead of doing the worksheet, can you tell I don't like worksheets? So instead of using the worksheet, let's create with this device that we have that the kids will be using someday in their future. Some of them already probably have a phone. Get Poplet Light. You can download the pick lodge. Guys, I have all these up here. There's six of them too. So please steal these, take those home. I don't want any of those left before the end of the day. So take them home, go to my website. I have them up there as well on my Weebly page on the digitaldogpound.com. But here's Poplet. So right now, we're going to write a story about those three pictures that you just took. So if I want to create a new Popple right here, I just tap the screen, double tap, and I'm going to do one. Actually, you know what, I'm going to have them connected. So I want this popple right here, see the little gray circle? I want to add a popple, and then I'm going to add a popple here, and I'm going to tap this one and add a popple here. So they all connect to the story that we're going to type in that center box about inferences. So the first box right here, we're going to go ahead and add those images that you just took. So we're going to go to my camera roll, and there's picture one, picture two. Now I'm doing this quickly, sorry. Picture two, and picture three, okay? So of course, obviously, you're going to have to do a little pre-teaching with the app, and I'm just kind of throwing it at you guys, but I tend to talk really fast, when I thought I was talking fast enough last session, but I guess not. Okay, so if I type in there, I'm just going to put my story, okay? And that's where the kids are going to write their short story. Now, you can zoom into this. Zoom out. It's kind of like inspiration on your Mac. Uh, I'm trying to think of other software that has uh, the mind mapping. Great tool right here. Uh, history classroom, timelines, relationships, book characters. Okay, so now I need a writing prompt. There's a great site. It's called Scholastic Story Starters, and I'm going to switch over to it right here. And it'll be the last thing I'll show you. Think of where that box was, because we would put this story into that box. I have this on the generators, part of my website. Or if you just Google Scholastic Story Starters, lots of ideas here. So now, give me, what do we want to do, adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, or scrambler? Sci-fi, we're going to do sci-fi, okay. Let's go in and we're going to choose, let's pick third grade. Oh, got to enter my first name here, sorry. So we're going to go in, Craig. All right, thank you. Yeah, the kids will say, do we have to capitalize that? Okay, so if you have an interactive whiteboard in your room, have the kid come up, tap on spin. So we're going to see our story prompt, here it is. And it's got... So you have to write a story that contains those three pictures about, you have to describe the favorite snack of a super strong mad scientist who has laser beam eyes. And you have to include those three pictures that you took of the camera, of this, and, and probably that wouldn't be a good one, so we take maybe this and re-spin that one. So go and spin it on your interactive whiteboard. Kids love this when you bring them up in front of the room and they can spin that. So now we'd have to write a thank you card to a super, super strong mad scientist who has laser beam eyes, including those three pictures somehow in your story. And then let your kids write, okay? Creativity, you think of when you were a kid and you got a refrigerator box. 
Mom, can I have that refrigerator box? What did you do with it? You made stuff out of it. Did you make a race car? I made some of the best race cars ever. So let your kids be creative in your classroom. Those are just a couple ideas for you. Please take those. I have one for BigHugeLabs.com, which is not really an app challenge. It's just a website with tons of ideas there. I have one for Show Me. Use it in your math classroom. I have one for Sketch, which is a great app on your phone. I, anybody using Evernote in here? I saw a couple people that were writing notes on Get Evernote. It goes everywhere with you. You put it on your phone. I marked up the program last night, put it into here, and you have it on your phone, your computer, wherever you go. So feel free to take those. Go to my website. Thank you, guys. Sorry, that was a quick session.